Bariatric Surgery, Wikipedia Article Audio Bariatric surgery includes a variety of procedures performed on people who have obesity. Weight loss is achieved by reducing the size of the stomach with a gastric band or through removal of a portion of the stomach or by resecting and rerouting the small intestine to a small stomach pouch. Long-term studies show the procedures cause significant long-term loss of weight, recovery from diabetes, improvement in cardiovascular risk factors, and a mortality reduction from 40% to 23%. The U.S. National Institutes of Health recommends bariatric surgery for obese people with a body mass index of at least 40 and for people with BMI of at least 35 and serious coexisting medical conditions such as diabetes. However, research is emerging that suggests bariatric surgery could be appropriate for those with a BMI of 35 to 40 with no comorbidities or a BMI of 30 to 35 with significant comorbidities. The most recent American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery guidelines suggest the position statement on consensus for BMI as an indication for bariatric surgery. The recent guidelines suggest that any patient with a BMI of more than 30 with comorbidities is a candidate for bariatric surgery. Indications Classification of Surgical Procedures a medical guideline by the American College of Physicians concluded. The surgery is contraindicated in patients who have end-stage disease and also in patients not committed to make lifestyle changes considered ideal for the surgery. In 2011, the International Diabetes Federation issued a position statement suggesting under some circumstances, People with a BMI 3035 should be eligible for surgery. When determining eligibility for bariatric surgery for extremely obese patients, psychiatric screening is critical, it is also critical for determining postoperative success. Patients with a body mass index of 40 kg M2 or greater have a five fold risk of depression and half of bariatric surgery candidates are depressed. Procedures can be grouped in three main categories, blocking, restricting, and mixed. Standard of care in the United States and most of the industrialized world in 2009 is for laparoscopic as opposed to open procedures. Future trends are attempting to achieve similar or better results via endoscopic procedures. Some procedures block absorption of food, although they also reduce stomach size. Blocking Procedures This complex operation is termed biliopancreatic diversion or the Scopinaro procedure. The original form of this procedure is now rarely performed because of problems with malnourishment. It has been replaced with a modification known as duodenal switch. Part of the stomach is resected, creating a smaller stomach. The distal part of the small intestine is then connected to the pouch, bypassing the duodenum and jejunum. In around 2% of patients there is severe malabsorption and nutritional deficiency that requires restoration of the normal absorption. The malabsorptive effect of BPD is so potent that, as in most restrictive procedures, those who undergo the procedure must take vitamin and dietary minerals above and beyond that of the normal population. Without these supplements, there is risk of serious deficiency diseases such as anemia and osteoporosis. Biliopancreatic Diversion Because gallstones are a common complication of the rapid weight loss following any type of bariatric surgery, some surgeons remove the gallbladder as a preventive measure during BPD. Others prefer to prescribe medications to reduce the risk of post-operative gallstones. Far fewer surgeons perform BPD compared to other weight loss surgeries, 
in part because of the need for long-term nutritional follow-up and monitoring of BPD patients. This procedure is no longer performed. It was a surgical weight loss procedure performed for the relief of morbid obesity from the 1950s through the 1970s in which all but 30 cm to 45 cm of the small bowel was detached and set to the side. Jejunoileal Bypass A study on humans was done in Chile using the same technique however the results were not conclusive and the device had issues with migration and slipping. A study recently done in the Netherlands found a decrease of 5.5 BMI points in three months with an endoluminal sleeve. Endoluminal sleeve Procedures that are restrictive shrink the size of the stomach or take up space inside the stomach, making people feel more full when they eat less. Restrictive procedures In the vertical banded gastroplasty, also called the Mason procedure or stomach stapling, a part of the stomach is permanently stapled to create a smaller pre-stomach pouch, which serves as the new stomach. The restriction of the stomach also can be created using a silicone band, which can be adjusted by addition or removal of saline through a port placed just under the skin. This operation can be performed laparoscopic, and is commonly referred to as a lap band. Weight loss is predominantly due to the restriction of nutrient intake that is created by the small gastric pouch and the narrow outlet. It is considered one of the safest procedures performed today with a mortality rate of 0.05%. Vertical banded gastroplasty Sleeve gastrectomy, or gastric sleeve, is a surgical weight loss procedure in which the stomach is reduced to about 15% of its original size, by surgical removal of a large portion of the stomach, following the major curve. The open edges are then attached together to leave the stomach shaped more like a tube, or a sleeve, with a banana shape. The procedure permanently reduces the size of the stomach. The procedure is performed laparoscopic and is not reversible. It has been found to be comparable in effectiveness to Roux-NY gastric bypass. Intragastric balloon involves placing a deflated balloon into the stomach, and then filling it to decrease the amount of gastric space. The balloon can be left in the stomach for a maximum of 6 months and results in an average weight loss of 5-9 BMI over half a year. The intragastric balloon is approved in Australia, Canada, Mexico, India, United States, and several European and South American countries. The intragastric balloon may be used prior to another bariatric surgery in order to assist the patient to reach a weight which is suitable for surgery, further it can also be used on several occasions if necessary. There are three cost categories for the intragastric balloon, preoperative, the procedure itself and postoperative. Quoted costs for the intragastric balloon are surgeon-specific and vary by region. Average quoted costs by region are as follows, Australia, $4,178 USD, Canada, $8,250 USD, Mexico, $5,800 USD, United Kingdom, $6,195 USD, United States, $8,150 USD. Basically, the procedure can best be understood as a version of the more popular gastric sleeve or gastrectomous surgery where a sleeve is created by suturing rather than removing stomach tissue thus preserving its natural nutrient absorption capabilities. Gastric plication significantly reduces the volume of the patient's stomach, so smaller amounts of food provide a feeling of satiety. 
the procedure is producing some significant results that were published in a recent study in bariatric times and are based on post-operative outcomes for 66 patients who had the gastric sleeve plication procedure between January 2007 and March 2010. Mean patient age was 34, with a mean BMI of 35. Follow-up visits for the assessment of safety and weight loss were scheduled at regular intervals in the post-operative period. No major complications were reported among the 66 patients. Weight loss outcomes are comparable to gastric bypass. Adjustable gastric band the study describes gastric sleeve plication as a restrictive technique that eliminates the complications associated with adjustable gastric banding and vertical sleeve gastrectomy. It does this by creating restriction without the use of implants and without gastric resection and staples. Sleeve gastrectomy Mixed procedures apply block and restrict at the same time. Surgery should be considered as a treatment option for patients with a BMI of 40 kg M2 or greater who instituted but failed an adequate exercise and diet program and who present with obesity-related comorbid conditions, such as hypertension, impaired glucose tolerance, diabetes mellitus, hyperlipidemia, and obstructive sleep apnea. A doctor-patient discussion of surgical options should include the long-term side effects, such as a possible need for re-operation, gallbladder disease, and malabsorption. Patients should be referred to high-volume centers with surgeons experienced in bariatric surgery. A common form of gastric bypass surgery is the RUNY gastric bypass designed to reduce the amount of food a person is able to eat by cutting away a part of the stomach. Gastric bypass is a permanent procedure that helps patients by changing how the stomach and small intestine handle the food that is eaten to achieve and maintain weight loss goals. After the surgery, the stomach will be smaller. A patient will feel full with less food. The gastric bypass had been the most commonly performed operation for weight loss in the United States, and approximately 140,000 gastric bypass procedures were performed in 2005. Its market share has decreased since then and by 2011, the frequency of gastric bypass was thought to be less than 50% of the weight loss surgery market. Biliopancreatic diversion 117 pounds slash 53 kg, RUNY gastric bypass 90 pounds slash 41 kg, open 95 LBS slash 43 kg, laparoscopic 84 pounds slash 38 kg. A factor in the success of any bariatric surgery is strict post-surgical adherence to a healthy pattern of eating. Intragastric balloon Stomach folding Mixed procedures Gastric bypass surgery There are certain patients who cannot tolerate the malabsorption and dumping syndrome associated with gastric bypass. In such patients, although earlier considered to be an irreversible procedure, there are instances where gastric bypass procedure can be partially reversed. A variation of the biliopancreatic diversion includes a duodenal switch. The part of the stomach along its greater curve is resected. The stomach is tubulized with a residual volume of about 150 ml. This volume reduction provides the food intake restriction component of this operation. This type of gastric resection is anatomically and functionally irreversible. The stomach is then disconnected from the duodenum and connected to the distal part of the small intestine. The duodenum and the upper part of the small intestine are reattached to the rest at about 75-100 cm from the colon. Gastric Sleeve Surgery Steps and Procedure 
This procedure where a device similar to a heart pacemaker is implanted by a surgeon, with the electrical leads stimulating the external surface of the stomach, is being studied in the USA. Electrical stimulation is thought to modify the activity of the enteric nervous system of the stomach, which is interpreted by the brain to give a sense of satiety, or fullness. Early evidence suggests that it is less effective than other forms of bariatric surgery. Immediately after bariatric surgery, the patient is restricted to a clear liquid diet, which includes foods such as clear broth, diluted fruit juices or sugar-free drinks and gelatin desserts. This diet is continued until the gastrointestinal tract has recovered somewhat from the surgery. The next stage provides a blended or pureed sugar-free diet for at least two weeks. This may consist of high protein, liquid or soft foods such as protein shakes, soft meats, and dairy products. Foods high in carbohydrates are usually avoided when possible during the initial weight loss period. Post-surgery Overeating is curbed because exceeding the capacity of the stomach causes nausea and vomiting. Diet restrictions after recovery from surgery depend in part on the type of surgery. Many patients will need to take a daily multivitamin pill for life to compensate for reduced absorption of essential nutrients. Because patients cannot eat a large quantity of food, Physicians typically recommend a diet that is relatively high in protein and low in fats and alcohol. It is very common, within the first month post-surgery, for a patient to undergo volume depletion and dehydration. Patients have difficulty drinking the appropriate amount of fluids as they adapt to their new gastric volume. Limitations on oral fluid intake, reduced calorie intake, and a higher incidence of vomiting and diarrhea are all factors that have a significant contribution to dehydration. In order to prevent fluid volume depletion and dehydration, a minimum of 4864 FL ounce should be consumed by repetitive small sips all day. In general, the malabsorptive procedures lead to more weight loss than the restrictive procedures, however, they have a higher risk profile. A meta-analysis from University of California, Los Angeles, reports the following weight loss at 36 months. Sleeve gastrectomy with duodenal switch A 2017 meta-analysis showed bariatric surgery to be effective for weight loss in adolescents, as assessed 36 months after the intervention. The same meta-analysis noted that additional data is needed to determine whether it is also effective for long-term weight loss in adolescents. According to the Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technologies in Health, the comparative evidence base for bariatric surgery in adolescents and young adults is limited to a few studies that were narrow in scope and with relatively small sample sizes. Another 2017 meta-analysis reported that it was effective at reducing weight among morbidly obese adults in China. In the short term, weight loss from bariatric surgeries is associated with reductions in some comorbidities of obesity, such as diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and sleep apnea, but the benefit for hypertension is uncertain. It is uncertain whether any given bariatric procedure is more effective than another in controlling comorbidities. There is no high-quality evidence concerning longer-term effects compared with conventional treatment on comorbidities. Implantable Gastric Stimulation Eating after bariatric surgery Fluid Recommendations Bariatric surgery in older patients has also been a topic of debate, centered on concerns for safety in this population, the relative benefits and risks in this population is not known. Given the remarkable rate of diabetes remission with bariatric surgery, 
there is considerable interest in offering this intervention to people with type 2 diabetes who have a lower BMI than is generally required for bariatric surgery, but high quality evidence is lacking and optimal timing of the procedure is uncertain. Laparoscopic bariatric surgery requires a hospital stay of only one or two days. Short-term complications from laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding are reported to be lower than laparoscopic RUNY surgery, and complications from laparoscopic RUNY surgery are lower than conventional RUNY surgery. The position of the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery as of 2017 was that it was not clearly understood whether medical weight loss treatments or bariatric surgery had an effect responsiveness to subsequent treatments for infertility in both men and women. Some studies have suggested that psychological health can improve after bariatric surgery. Effectiveness of Surgery the costs of bariatric surgery depend on the type of procedure performed and method of payment along with location-specific factors including geographical region, surgical practice, and the hospital in which the surgery is performed. The four established procedure types and duodenal switch carry an average cost in the United States of $24,000. $15,000, $19,000, and $27,000 respectively. However, costs can vary significantly by location. Quoted costs generally include fees for the hospital, surgeon, surgical assistant, anesthesia and implanted devices. Depending on the surgical practice, Costs may include or omit pre-OP, post-OP, or longer-term follow-up office visits. Weight loss surgery in adults is associated with relatively large risks and complications, compared to other treatments for obesity. As the rate of complications appears to be reduced when the procedure is performed by an experienced surgeon, Guidelines recommend that surgery be performed in dedicated or experienced units. It has been observed that the rate of leaks was greater in low-volume centers whereas high-volume centers showed a lesser leak rate. Leak rates have now globally decreased to a mean of 1 to 5 percent. Metabolic bone disease manifesting as osteopenia and secondary hyperparathyroidism have been reported after RUNY gastric bypass surgery due to reduced calcium absorption. The highest concentration of calcium transporters is in the duodenum. Since the ingested food will not pass through the duodenum after a bypass procedure, calcium levels in the blood may decrease causing secondary hyperparathyroidism, increase in bone turnover, and a decrease in bone mass. Increased risk of fracture has also been linked to bariatric surgery. Rapid weight loss after obesity surgery can contribute to the development of gallstones as well by increasing the lithogenicity of bile. Adverse effects on the kidneys have been studied. Hyperoxaluria that can potentially lead to oxalate nephropathy and irreversible renal failure is the most significant abnormality seen on urine chemistry studies. Rhabdomyolysis leading to acute kidney injury, an impaired renal handling of acid and base has been reported after bypass surgery. Nutritional derangements due to deficiencies of micronutrients like iron, vitamin B12, Fat-soluble vitamins, thiamine, and folate are especially common after malabsorptive bariatric procedures. Seizures due to hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia have been reported. Inappropriate insulin secretion secondary to islet cell hyperplasia, called pancreatic nesidioblastosis, might explain this syndrome. A study completed in 2011 and published in JAMA Surgery reports that self-harm behaviors and suicide are increased in patients with mental health issues in the five years prior to bariatric surgery.
As childhood obesity has more than doubled over recent years and more than tripled in adolescence, bariatric surgery for youth has become increasingly common. Some worry that a decline in life expectancy might occur from the increasing levels of obesity, so providing youth with proper care may help prevent the serious medical complications caused by obesity and its related diseases. Difficulties and ethical issues arise when making decisions related to obesity treatments for those that are too young or otherwise unable to give consent without adult guidance. Children and adolescents are still developing, both physically and mentally. This makes it difficult for them to make an informed decision and give consent to move forward with a treatment. These patients may also be experiencing severe depression or other psychological disorders related to their obesity that make understanding the information very difficult. Open weight loss surgery began slowly in the 1950s with the intestinal bypass. It involved anastomosis of the upper and lower intestine, which bypasses a large amount of the absorptive circuit, which caused weight loss purely by the malabsorption of food. Later doctors J. Howard Payne, Laurent T. DeWind and Robert R. Commons developed in 1963 the jejunocolic shunt which connected the upper small intestine to the colon. The laboratory research leading to gastric bypass did not begin until 1965, when Drive Edward E. Mason and Dr. Shikashi Ito at the University of Iowa developed the original gastric bypass for weight reduction which led to fewer complications than the intestinal bypass and for this reason Mason is known as the father of obesity surgery. Weight loss Reduced mortality and morbidity Fertility Psychiatric-slash-psychological Costs of surgery Adverse effects Bariatric surgery in youth History